The senior senator from Alabama, who claims to support our troops, is now blocking more than 300 military operations with his extreme political agenda. The failure to confirm our superbly qualified senior uniform leaders undermines our military readiness. What Senator Tupperville is doing is unprecedented. What he is doing is dangerous, uh, and it is shameful. When the military-industrial complex, the Biden White House, and the regime media are all against you, it's a sign that you're doing the right thing. The senior senator from Alabama has been learning that lesson since February of this year, and that's when Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin rolled out the Pentagon's formal, formal plan to fly service members to blue states so they could access abortion services, all in the name of military readiness, we were told. Now, following the announcement, Senator Tuberville, a former football coach, decided it was time to mount a goal line stand for the soul of our military. Using his position on the Senate Armed Forces Com Committee, he has successfully blocked over 300 of Biden's nominees to various posts from confirmation. And as it stands, both the Marine Corps and the Army are without a Senate-confirmed commander. Now, despite months of relentless attacks, the Alabama senator has stood his ground and dug his heels in at every turn in the name of protecting our military from the rot of these progressive politics. He joins me now. Senator, um, now, couldn't this just be all over if the Pentagon just backed down from what is a radical position on abortion services? And how does that have anything to do with military readiness? Thank you, Laura. You know, it's a very extreme policy, and it's uh, a policy now that, that we've had for 40 years that was voted on by Joe Biden in 1985 that we put in. The military has had no problems with this, rape, incest, and health of the mom, and it's been, it's worked great. And I asked a briefing committee about a month ago, give me your problems with this. Did, have you had complaints? They had zero complaints in 40 years from the military. So uh, it's very extreme. Listen, I've got holds on these nominees, but they can push these nominees through one at a time. I've only got holds for groups of them at a time. I, I've got hold on every one of them, but they can bring them one at a time to the floor. But Chuck Schumer doesn't want to work. I mean, we've been out of we've been out of session 50 days before this month, and, and now we're all on vacation for a month. They don't want to. They've got the they've got the floor, but they don't want to do any work with it. They want to just push these through. I'm not going to allow that to happen. Well, Senator, the New York Times tonight is saying that it's Republican political contenders uh, and during a campaign season who are responsible for the public's uh, declining trust in institutions, whether it be the FBI or DOJ or even our military, pointing to people like you and others who are taking stands like this. Your reaction? Well, the Democrats have been a disaster, and I'm not a politician, Laura, you know that, and I've been up there two and a half years, and it's an, an embarrassment to how we're running this country. We're 32 trillion in debt. They care about nobody. Uh, you know, we're sending all this money to Ukraine and overseas, and our people over here are begging for help. They're begging for help, but we're sending other people money. They, we could care less about our borders, our crime, our national security. Uh, there is zero leadership in Washington, D.C. I'm talking about no leadership. And everybody's kind of looking around on the Republican side going, uh, what direction are we going? Uh, we're actually looking for some leadership, but uh, we don't have any. There's there's none in Washington, D.C. when it comes to the Democrats. And if we don't change that, I don't know whether a year and a half uh, when we do change presidents, and that will happen, I don't know that whether, whether we're going to be able to survive to that point because we, are, we have hit the downslide so quickly in education, our FBI, all our institutions are, are gone. And again, as I said earlier, we're dead broke. This country is dead broke, and they want to spend more money in the next year and a half. I don't know where we're going to get it from. Well, a new poll is showing that Americans, as I predicted, are growing very tired of funding the regime's war in Ukraine and the proxy war, of course, against Russia. This was a new CNN poll released on Friday that 55 percent of Americans say Congress should not authorize additional funding same percent of independent voters agree. 56 percent said we've done enough. Uh, will this make any difference? Because in past conflicts, it's taken a long time for politicians to get the point. Yeah, we're not getting the point in Washington, D.C. I haven't voted for a dime to send Ukraine. I'm for Ukraine. Russia should have never done this. I was in 
uh, Ukraine three months with uh, President Zelensky before this started, they were already fighting to that point. But at the end of the day, it's a junior high team playing a college team. Uh, they can't win. Uh, we can throw all the money we want to. Uh, but unless we send NATO and our troops over, which we're not going to do if I've got anything to do with it, then then there, there's no chance. So they're trying to get the everybody's eye off the real problem over here, and that's the Biden administration and the Democrats. They're a total disaster. Well, a woke military is not going to be a successful military. Senator, thank you so much. Keep up the good fight. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.